Well, uh, this passage has to do with uh, climacteric fruits and non-climacteric fruits. Uh, you can read the passage for yourself. And uh, the author talks about their color and preference of animals and people for the kinds of fruits, right? He's talking about all these things and how they are propagated. The first question, which one of the following option means arboreal and camouflage? Well, arboreal and camouflage. Arboreal refers to living in tree, dwelling in tree, and camouflage means disguised. Therefore, the correct option is number four. Uh, the next question is, uh, the main point the writer makes is that fruit-bearing plants are better protected than other plant species and can propagate easily. No, he doesn't say that. Of all kinds need to be studied, um, not just those consumed by humans. No, and other plant species propagation cannot be studied accurately. He doesn't say that. What does he say? He means to say uh, the fruit-bearing plants have the same problems in propagation as other plants. That is what you can deduce, infer from the passage. So the answer is number four. Uh, the next question, according to the passage, the interest in the difference between climacteric and non-climacteric fruits is in what? It's not in the environmental or gastronomical or uh, the public health context. It is in the commercial uh, context. And he points that out in the first paragraph where he says that uh, the green food, fruit grower, growers and green grocers uh, must take, make sure that their wares are in tip-top condition when they arrive at the marketplace, right? He's talking about the commercial context. So the answer is number three. Take the next question. Uh, he says, uh, consider the following two findings. Non-climacteric fruits tend to have vivid colors. 36 varieties of climacteric and non-climacteric fruits were eaten predominantly either by ground dwellers or by arboreal or aerial animals respectively. Well, uh, by looking at the statement, you can make out uh, which is the main evidence and which is the supplementary evidence. If you say non-climatic fruits tend to have vivid colors, that is one piece of evidence, right? And the, the 36 varieties of climatic and which is so exact, that is the main evidence. And number one would be the supplementary evidence evidence confirming the hypothesis of the biologist. So the answer is number one. Finding uh, one provides supplementary evidence and number two provides you see the main evidence confirming the, the hypothesis of the biologist. Uh, well if you read the passage closely you can answer number five. And number five says the origins of the distinguishing characteristics between the two types of fruits climateric and non climateric or what is the uh, difference the origins of the distinguishing characteristics what is the origins of the distinguishing characteristic the origins of the distinguishing characteristics between the two types of fruits that is the non climateric and climateric are are not clear it's nebulous in spite of the research so the answer should be number 3 uh, take the next question the study has been based on what the study you see of the climateric and the non climateric food, uh, what is this based on? Uh, you have the answer in the first line of the last paragraph. The main limitation of their work is that they looked at fruits eaten by people. Okay, so it is based on that particular uh, fact fruits that are eaten by people. So the other answers are incorrect. The correct answer is number. Three. The next question, the passage is about discovery of an, the invention or the discovery of an injection, you see, against uh, the smallpox virus. So, he is talking about in the paragraph about the experiments the doctor performed and uh, what was the result. I mean, if a particular child was protected against the smallpox virus. Local reaction refers to what? You see, when uh, some kind of uh, local reaction occurs, uh, when a medicine is taken or an injection given, uh, it means an adverse reaction caused by injection. So the answer is number one. Uh, the next question, 23 cases were put on record with the objective to explain very clearly that you you can find that answer in paragraph number two of the passage 
the first three lines you have the answer the answer is uh, the cowpox vaccine protected the patient from another deadly disease that is the answer that is the answer is number three uh, take the next question on returning from london dr jena was disappointed because why uh, you have the answer in paragraph number three the uh, fifth line you say Geneva went back to Gloucestershire disappointed why he remained in London for three months without being able to find anyone who would submit to vaccination that is the answer he was unsuccessful in replicating the experiment due to lack of volunteers he didn't get volunteers who would take the injection so that is why he was disappointed uh, so the answer is number three uh, the next question according to the author the main idea in the passages what uh, the main idea is chance and risk play a part in the success of scientific experiments you see the chance and risk they play a part uh, because there could have been any local reaction any problem so the answer is number three uh, if you look at the other answers scientific breakthroughs are more likely to happen in major urban centers we don't have evidence for that to explore the causes for the vaccine hesitancy no he's not doing that he's not exploring the causes for why people aren't ready to take vaccination he's not talking about that a documentation key documentation is key for disseminating science no that is not the answer so the answer is number three uh, chance and risk play a part in the success of scientific experiments uh, read the next question general received a lot of recognition from medical bodies because uh, you have uh, the debate on this in the last two paragraphs some doctors opposing general and some in favor particularly in the last paragraph there were some who were in favor of the vaccination uh, so he received a lot of recognition from medical bodies because most of his colleagues realized the effectiveness of his work that is why he received uh, recognition from medical bodies so the answer is number 2 uh, take the next question by calling the vaccine unjustifiable dr ingen who meant that vaccination Uh, made people sick and failed to provide general immunity you find the answer in the last but one paragraph the second last paragraph where he says that dr ignu became the leader of a strong faction of medical profession of london who not only would have nothing to do with the vaccination but proclaimed openly that it was a dangerous innovation absolutely unjustifiable and communicated disease without protecting any against any other so Uh, what he meant was to say that vaccination played, uh, failed to provide immunity and uh, it made people sick so the answer is number 4 the other three are incorrect it actually spread the disease no it was an injustice against those on whom it was tested we don't have evidence for that it was being carried out without any legal basis we don't have that in the passage take the question complete the following sentences by choosing the most appropriate word phrase from the options given below uh, leela is always nasty and nasty and inconsiderable with her colleagues now that she has a rude superior she is getting what a taste of her own medicine she is paid back in her own coin right uh, that is the uh, idiomatic collocation a taste of her own medicine uh, a dose of bitter medicine a spoon of her own they are all incorrect an unpleasant medicine dose they are all incorrect they don't uh, fit in the correct phrase is a taste of her own medicine so the answer is number 3 Uh, the next sentence ever since girish won the prestigious infosys prize he has been behaving, behaving uh, condescendingly right uh, condescending if you condescend what you do is you uh, behave in a uh, attitude of patronizing superior in a super serious manner in a snobbish manner yes in a snobbish manner that is uh, condescending you behave in a patronizing superior manner so the correct answer is number 1 and that is condescending the others are incorrect you can't say he behaves controversially or ambitiously or overly overly means excessively so they don't suit Uh, the blank so the answer is number 1 uh, the next one what is the correct phrase that you will use i still have two more difficult exams left but i am trying to 
and number three look on the bright side after these i won't have any more for a year so look on the bright side that is a correct phrase you don't say look forward to the bright side or think about the sunny side or think upon the sunny side they are all incorrect the correct collocation is uh, look on the bright side so the answer is number three uh, look at the next sentence uh, for the past three decades this chain of coffee shops has been committed to building a culture where everyone is welcome they are an ally to the lg BTQ community and this is just one instance of their work. Uh, well, it is not a discretionary practice. It is not mindfulness and objectivity. No, it's not that. Uh, discriminate. They are not discriminating. What they are doing is they are including everyone. The answer should be number two: inclusivity and diversity. Right? Taking in more and more diverse kinds of people, all kinds of people. So the answer is number two. The next sentence. She looks down on her classmates because she comes from a rich aristocratic family. That is the correct phrasal verb. Looks down on. Uh, it cannot be any anything else, right? To look down upon means to treat someone you see disrespectfully without respect, uh, considering someone unworthy of respect. If you look down upon someone, that is you don't respect them. So the correct answer is number two. Uh, the next sentence: Some of the best spies take the guise of innocuous secretaries and researchers and are able to send large amounts of information to their heads of espionage as they are hiding in plain sight. They are un unnoticeable, uh, in a sense. Um, they don't come forward uh, and they are their presence is masked that is what hiding in plain sight and that is the correct collocation the correct idiom so it should be hiding in plain sight number 2 uh, the next sentence uh, flying this simple aeroplane is a piece of cake for the experienced uh, pilot what do you mean by a piece of cake that is something that is easily done something that is easily done uh, that is the correct idiom it's a piece of cake. Any difficult thing, you say, oh, it's a piece of cake for me. So the correct uh, option is number one. Uh, well, uh, in this question, uh, you in each of the following sentences, the incorrect part of the sentence is underlined. Choose an alternative from the four given options so that the sentence is rendered correct. Okay, which when all the words on the page got scrambled, she quickly pressed undo, after which the document reverted back to its original state. Uh, the mistake lies in what you call the use of reverted and back, right? Uh, you don't require back, you see, after reverted because uh, revert already has the meaning of back in it, okay? It reverted back, don't, that's incorrect. You just revert. Uh, you don't require B A C K back. So therefore, number one is incorrect. Number two is incorrect. There is no back, but then the use of ITS is incorrect. It cannot be an apostrophe. It should be the possessive ITS. Because if you have an apostrophe, it means it is, and that is incorrect. And uh, number four has both back and ITS with an apostrophe, that's incorrect. So the correct one is document reverted to its original state, number three. Uh, take the next sentence. Here you have, you have a sentence like, if I had known that you needed to go to the airport yesterday, I could drive you there. That is incorrect. Uh, you see, we are talking about the rejected condition. And in the rejected condition, the if clause has a past perfect had known and the main clause uh, should have a uh, would have should have might have could have clause so you should say if i had known that you needed to go to the airport yesterday i would have driven you there i could have driven you there uh, would have driven you there is the correct answer is that is number four uh, that is the rule about what you call uh, the conditional clauses the conditional clause, the if clause has a past perfect, the main clause will have a would have, could have, should have construction. So the answer is number four. Uh, the next sentence, you have the same kind of argument uh, you see for its answer. The one I gave you now, uh, you have a conditional clause. The principal and professors are authorized to sanction leave to a student provided, provided she will have. Why she will have? You have the present tense. The principal and professors are authorized. You have the present tense. So therefore, the following clause, uh, which starts with provide, should also have a present tense. Provided she has a good attendance record. 
नंबर फोर इज दी करेक्ट आंसर नंबर थ्री इज इन करेक्ट बिकॉज इट एज अ पास नंबर टू इज इन करेक्ट प्रोवाइडेड दैट अ गुड अटेंडेंस रिकॉर्ड इज मेंटेन बाय हर दैट इज इन करेक्ट प्रोवाइडेड दैट शी दैट इज इन करेक्ट सो नंबर फोर इज द करेक्ट आंसर इन द नेक्स्ट सेंटेंस यू हैव टू चूज वन वर्ड आउट ऑफ द फोर ऑप्शन ही सेज दैट इन करेक्ट पार्ट इज अंडर लाइन हिस्स टॉक ऑन हेरिटेज साइट हैज पिक्ड अप माई इंटरेस्ट नो इट योर इंटरेस्ट इज इन पिक्ड अप it is aroused aroused number 2 is the correct answer uh, has caught my interest adopted my interest brighten my interest no they are not correct the correct phrase is aroused uh, the next sentence he was having a difficult time but never once he complained uh, you see never once not once they are always followed by the verb the verb follows them right not the noun so here he doesn't uh, repeat the option never once but instead he puts not once and not once is followed by in 2 and 3 it is followed by a noun phrase and in 4 it is uh, you see not once did he give the complaint that is incorrect so the correct option is not once did he complain it is followed by did did so the correct answer is number 1 Uh, look at the question. Each of the paragraphs given below has a sentence missing, which is indicated by a blank. Uh, from the choices given below, each paragraph choose the sentence that seems most logically appropriate to complete the paragraph. Uh, what is the paragraph about? If you uh, look carefully, he is saying in Southeast Asia, for example, climate and lifestyle factors mean that people spend much more time in shopping malls than Europeans do. He is talking about a particular culture, the culture of what he call the people in southeast asia right and then he talks about the gender variations in the way we shop and as descend so he's talking about a particular culture he's not talking about the retail stores or uh, how men hunting and women gathering and then uh, people enjoying so he's, he's talking about a culture so the correct answer is number 1 culture plays an important role in shaping the shopping experience culture plays an important role and then he says in southeast asia for example so the correct answer is number 1 Uh, take the next question look at the uh, key word that is uh, the indus valley civilization wrote with a script now the scholars are unable to discuss, decipher that script right and then he talks about a text so it is all about decoding a text decoding a script so it has to do with language you see that is the idea here so the correct option would be number 2 they then they will then be able to decode the indus valley's language you see uh, he is talking about the language he is not talking about what he call mesopotamia and the uh, indus valley relationship or for that matter that there was trade between the two or for that matter that Uh, which civilization was older no the important thing is decoding the text decoding the language you see when he talks about uh, the beach holiday holiday de- destination the sentence that comes it, it is about 600 km away from mumbai so reaching there is not a major problem um, he is talking about the distance so what should and then after that what does he say the major goan beaches are tourist attractions and have some good beaches beach view hotels and plenty of shops selling touristy uh, touristy things such as so and so and so forth now if you uh, put in the first one a great getaway piece it offers an interesting variety of food sightseeing options it doesn't fit into the sentence you see he's talking about uh, he says it is um, uh, over 600 km away and then some major beaches that's an example one of the greatest things about a holiday in goa that is another another example a statement one can be lazy the best thing that suits here about the resistance is number 3 there are buses that ply at night there are both day and night trains and one can always uh, hire a car and reach there in comfort at a, in about 10 hours can cover the distance right so that is what we are looking for here the relationship to the rest of the sentence so number 3 is the correct answer uh, take the next sentence he says nowadays many teenagers and young adults around the world have to spend most of their time studying in order to get top grades a university place and a good job now there are several causes for this situation now what is that situation one of the main ones being exams these are stressful experiences and most students take a huge number of them during their school career what is the situation do you think number 1 3 and 4 are situations 
therefore it would be better to learn how to apply the knowledge gained what does what is that situation or uh, therefore studying while you are exhausted is unproductive uh, for this reason the education system has to change for the welfare of the students no it is number 2 for this reason there is often little time left for hobbies or socializing now that is a situation there are several causes for this situation that they don't socialize or they don't have hobbies uh because one of the reasons is causes is exams they have to keep on studying for the exam so the answer is number 2 uh, take the next one visually strong well it should be uh, the answer should be number 4 because if you use uh, number 1 uh, you can uh, you can talk about monochromatic films you can't say monochrome films or you can't say are barely preserved okay barely preserved um is not a very uh, it's not very good english right um then you have number 2 action packed badly preserved and then you say leading to the accusation that they were primitive you know it cannot be an accusation right nobody has committed a fault there and number 3 classic dispassionately leading to the conclusion that doesn't suit here classic films are dispassionately preserved what does it mean the correct answer is number 4 silent films of the 1920s are poorly preserved and they lead to the misconception that they were primitive and barely watchable so the answer is number 4 uh, take the next question in an anthropocentric what does anthropocentric means that is you see uh, believing or what you say regarding human kind as central or most important element of existence especially as opposed to god or animal right um you believe that uh, human beings are the central or most important entity in the universe um it is something like humanocentrism uh, so that is the meaning of the word anthrop anthropocentric now we don't say anthropocentric uh, what do you call construct or believe we don't say that uh, you can use the word universe but then what happens is the, therefore the concepts of humane treatment and necessary gain are economic in nature which doesn't mean much and then uh, if you use um, rest entirely on the widely so number 1 and 2 are incorrect 1 2 and 3 are incorrect the correct answer is number 4 you say in an anthropocentric world view and then you can talk about um, no the con therefore the concept of humane treatment and necessary suffering are economic in nature right the idea that killing animals is not a serious issue as long as are not made to suffer rests explicitly on the widely accepted idea that animals do not have a right to life so uh, the correct answer is number 4 Uh, take the next sentence uh, the investigators have announced that he had leaked the uh, no they don't announce they don't announce you don't announce that somebody has leaked the paper you allege or you can even accuse leaked uh, important information about profit dramatically dramatically is incorrect number 1 is incorrect number 2 is incorrect the word dramatically uh, number 3 discovered Uh, and he had leaked internal information uh, and allowing associates to profit a normalis the investigators have discovered that he had leaked what's the discovery there no you don't discover uh, you allege they allege that he had leaked the confidential uh, the investigators have alleged that he had leaked confidential insider information and then he had profit illicitly from the deal so the answer is number 4 uh, look at the next sentence uh, from the meaning of the paragraph you could uh, you can understand that uh, these messages are unwelcome we don't want these messages they aren't informative educational and so forth so if you look at number 2 3 and 4 they contain you see such ideas of uh, in for being informative and then being educational right uh, then he uses the word commercial and inescapable uh, that are uh, that are commercial and inescapable what do you mean by inescapable uh, the point is it should be number 1 they are unsolicited messages we don't want them but they come all the regulators have used more technology to stop this 
um, uh, what do you call spammers find ways around it so the correct answer is number one uh, well the next sentence if you look at the theme of the sentence it is about uh, thinking about yourselves and thinking about life in general so when you are talking about life in general then you are talking like a subject like uh, philosophy not linguistics or language or uh, orthography or history no you are not talking about these things because uh, thought provoking questions may be raised in any subject but when you start thinking deeply about life in general then it has to be about philosophy okay and then you have different thinkers and so forth so the correct option here would be philosopher the beauty of philosophy is that it inspires us to think as it poses thought provoking questions and inspires us to think deeply about ourselves uh, further pondering about the ideas and perspectives outlined by different thinkers can help us to gain a better uh, what you call understanding of the world we live in so the correct answer is number 3 uh, take the next sentence uh, achieve giving space flight enabled human beings to begin to explore uh, the solar systems and the rest of the universe okay uh, that is the correct option number 1 rest of the universe to understand the many objects and phenomena that are better observed from a space perspective and to use for human benefit the resources and attributes of the space environment all of these activities discovery scientific understanding and the uh, application of the Understanding to serve human purposes are elements of space exploration. I read out the entire thing because if you try to uh, re replace universe by number two, that is cosmos. Uh, it could be cosmos, but then you can't use the word uh, material to understand the many objects and materials. Uh, phenomena is the correct option, and then uh, you, if you say that scientific understanding and the principles of that understanding, what does it mean to serve human purposes? No. In the same way, configuration number three is incorrect. You cannot use configuration. Galaxy could be correct, but then the other options are incorrect. You see, ideologies it doesn't make any sense. Uh, look at this exercise. One of the statements below contains a word used incorrectly. Choose the option which has the incorrect or inappropriate usage of the word. Uh, well, uh, if you look at the four sentences in number one, the word "cross" is incorrectly used. It doesn't make any sense. You say although he thinks he is the life of the party, his remarks are insensitive and his jokes are vulgar, cross and crude. Uh, what are cross jokes? Uh, what are his jokes are vulgar? It could be crude, but joke. Are cross, so cross is incorrectly used. Um, the other three have the word cross correctly used. The mistakes of his youth are the cross that he has to bear for the rest of his life. You see, a cross is a kind of punishment. You see, uh, we were told that she had lived in a uh, through tough times, which made her cross. angry it was a long journey by road and they had yet to find a boat that would help them cross the river that is go across the river so the other three sentences are the correct uh, usage of the word cross uh, but not number 1 if you read the four sentences the word that is used in each of the sentences each one of the sentences is spot number 1 uh, his answer was spot on that is it was immediate um, such a spot on his career was difficult to ignore when this adding promotions there was a scenic spot not very far from our college right okay she wanted to make a good impression but at the last moment she discovered a spot of ink on her collar so to my mind uh, all these four sentences are correct the word spot has been correctly used in all the four sentences okay so there is no error in any of these sentences uh, she interviewed many uh, teens to collaborate the thesis on their mental health issues what do you mean by collaborate the thesis collaborate means uh, to cooperate okay or it means to cooperate treacherously you see in order to Uh, deceive someone it could be used in uh, two senses but uh, one is in the good sense of cooperation the other in the sense of uh, cooperate treacherously so number 1 is incorrect the other three are correct the policeman collaborated that is he cooperated some treacherous relatives of indian rulers collaborated yeah that's correct um they refused to collaborate that is the woman refused to collaborate that's correct so number 1 is the correct answer in which the word collaborate is used incorrect the next uh, question 
He says her admirer considered her demeanor to be of great state and refinement. Uh, the demeanor could be of uh, great refinement, you see, but uh, state doesn't mean anything. In the other three sentences, you have uh, to state the grounds, that is to express the grounds. And then uh, Udaipur is the most densely populated state, right? Uh, that is an area location. You have different states. And then the state of his grandfather's health was critical, that is condition. Uh, in 2, 3 and 4, state is correctly used. But in number 1, state is incorrectly used. Uh, you can't say that they consider her behavior to be of great state. What does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. Uh, so number 1 is incorrect. Uh, the next sentence, the problems caused by flouting rules. Flouting rules is openly disregard any rule, right? Openly disregard or uh, disobey any rule or mock at it. Mock is a little archaic, no doubt. Uh, you flout them. Her fault was that she flouted the dress code. That is, openly uh, disregarded the dress code and refused to wear the uniform. Okay, that's correct. The, the orchestra decided to flout tradition and play their instruments wearing ordinary clothes. They also, you see, disregard something. Now, if you say she flouted her designer wear and accessories in front of her classmates, that means she's making a display of it. She's not, uh, it cannot mean, uh, you see, uh, disregarding. So, number four, the word flout is incorrectly used. It should be flaunted. It could be flaunted. F-L-A-U-N-T-E-D. She flaunted. Flaunted, right? Making a show of something. But here this is incorrectly used. Therefore, number four is the answer. Well, in the next sentence also you have the word draw. You see two, three and four, I have correctly used the word draw. Uh, he was lucky to win the draw in the lottery. You have a draw in the lottery. Um, you say you draw water from the well or you draw water from the river. Uh, from a pond, a lake, and then the cricket match was heading for a draw. We use draw in all the three senses, but number one is incorrect. Documents in the draw of his cupboard. It cannot be draw. It has to be drawer. D-R-A-W-E-R. -E you have to add an E-R to it. Drawer. You know what a drawer is. It's a sliding compartment you see in any cupboard. So it should be drawer. A drawer could also mean a pair of knickers, right? A short pants. Uh, but here, of course, it should be drawer. D-R-A-W-E-R, drawer. Uh, take the next question in which you have got to rearrange all these sentences to form a coherent whole, right? The logical order. You have to create a logical order because they have been haphazardly, what you call, displayed to you. You have to arrange them in the right order. So, uh, if you... You have to go through all the five sentences and you'll see for yourself that number five should be the first sentence. That is, human eyes perform jiggles, more formally called saccades, in response to a change in the field of vision. Now, what are saccades? You see, saccades are what you call a rapid movement of the eye between two fixation points. The movement of the eye from one point to another, uh, you see, is a jiggle or a, uh, a saccade. So, uh, it is what you call the first sentence in the paragraph. Now, if you look at the arrangement in the sentences here, uh, you will find that the answer is 5, 4, 2, 3, 1. Uh, that is the possible answer because uh, you read through all these sentences and you'll see the uh, logical progression. First, there is a general statement. Then he talks about, you see, how jiggling or saccade is done in number 4 and number 2. Two, he gives an example of the youthful eyes and in number three, uh, he talks about the person attached to those eyes ages, that is about the old age. And then uh, finally, he comes to number one, which means uh, they, they receive less input. So the answer is, possible answer is five, four, two, three, one. Uh, again, in these sentences, you look for what you call the general sentence. You see, he says uh, Japanese artisans have been making ceramics known as yakimono since prehistoric times. Number four should be the first sentence. And then 
the popularity of these creations because these creations refer to the ceramics okay the ceramics you see becomes the antecedent of these creations you have to spot that then only it will be grammatically and logically correct so after four you have one and after one uh, you have three because you again have displayed thousands of them what do you mean by them them refers to the ceramics both handcrafted and uh, factory made and the last one is two uh, however um, savvy, uh, savvy tourists find the best bargain for ceramics in Tokyo's kitchen town so the answer is four one three and two four one three and two uh, look at the next uh, group of sentences here you have uh, again you must look for what you call the key words uh, the basic idea is what is the municipal corporation going to do it's going to breathe life back into cities cyan Talao Lake with the rejuvenation and beautification of the centuries old lake. That is what the municipal corporation is going to do. So in that sense, you see number three should be the first sentence. And then he talks about the cyan fort, uh, which is number one. And then um, uh, he talks about the past. Earlier, the Talao was a known natural water tank. That is number five. And then number four, he talks about the lake has lost its prominence. And that is why po possibly the municipal corporation is set to breathe life into it. And then the last one is two. One is home to several marine creatures. So the correct answer is three, one, five, four, two. Three, one, five, four, two. Uh, take the next sentence. The answer to this question is four, three, five, one, two. Uh, you can see for yourself four, three, five, one, two. Uh, you can see your for yourself number four is the general statement. The June to September rain bearing system is often called the lifeblood of the country's economy. This is because he gives the reason. This is because half the Indian population depends upon farm derived incomes. And then he comes back to number five. Unfortunately, however, nearly 40% of India's net zone area does not have access to irrigation. And then number one, uh, a subpar mon monsoon cuts farm yield and so forth. And number two, uh, a robust monsoon will help put a lid on food inflammation etc so uh, that is the logic that's involved here so the correct answer is four three five one two the next question look at the sentences here you can see for yourself the general statement is the central african republic has approved bitcoin as an official currency uh, what should then follow uh, i think uh, number four should follow economists criticize this move you see this move is what you call um has to have an antecedent and the antecedent is what you call number one the approval of the bitcoin as official currency this was criticized you see by the economists as a potential risk to the financial stability of the nation this move and then uh, number three is uh, others claim that this will damage this will damage this move will damage right look at the reference point this move will damage that is the approval uh, the bitcoin as official currency the main idea you see of this uh, accepting british uh, what you call uh, bitcoin runs through number uh, for number one number four and number three right and the last one is of course two that this will damage the environment as well as the economy so the correct answer is one four three two one four three two